because I read about you that you were uh, compared a lot with grunge music uh, early mm. on and that you didn't particularly like it. So when you started making waves a bit, and, and was it, how did you feel about people trying to pigeonhole then the band? I mean, it still, it still goes on today. Yeah. I mean, we got, we got a review in the other day of the record. <laughs> it was one of the first reviews you read. And it called it... Um, Wait, get the start of it. Um, Post-punk, indie. indie rock, avant... <laughs> No, grunge. no, the album was in the middle. No, it was like it industrial ended. avant grunge fusion. Fusion. <laughs> yeah, that was a set. That was half a sentence. <laughs> that was like uh, that's the genre. And it's like that's it's <laughs> a really nice review. Thank you very much. Yeah, but yeah, like, it was very but positive. It's really weird that like we don't do music. Or we're not slagging or anything. It's just mm. like we don't really see those. We don't hear music in that way. Like, we don't, we don't, I don't like when we want to. If you kind of say what kind of band you are, and you just say, "Oh, I'm in a, I'm in a, like a new rave band," it kind of pigeons you down to that. Mm. And also, well, I, I really hope we're not in a new rave. Band. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, it's like for me, it's like yes and no. I mean, I think there is an importance of genreizing music to discover music. You know, mm. if it's just if nothing's got any sort of genre, and genres have never been existed, you know, there'd be just tons and tons and tons of music, and you'd just be a big open field full of sound. So it's good to be able to section it off. It's like, well, I'm coming in the mood for something that's sonically like this. I think when you get very specific, like we've been called post-goth, uh, like what, what the hell is that? I don't know, like, yeah, but right. when you get very specific like that, that's when it gets a bit silly. I think um, an easy way to look at it is just post-punk, because post-punk for us is not necessarily just the music, it's the ideology behind mm. it, which was, you know, you don't have to follow these rules, which, all, which was what a lot of the punk attitude had. Right. Um, and then, but musically, it's not punk music, is it, what, what traditional punk, it's not three chord. You know, you know, anti-government music in a way. I mean, we experiment with that one a little bit, but um, no. I mean, we try to we try to keep it open. Like. Punk, punk's like, a, 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 like trying to get away from excess in a way and kind of to project the self. And that's mm. what it's like. It's gathering all your ethics from all areas and applying them to your life. In and like by, by defining what you don't like and also like loving and like really caring about what you love. And just like applying that in, in in the most you way possible, you know, it's not it's it's not Sid Vicious in that way. That's Sid Vicious's version of punk, but like punk is a personal thing, you know. Mm. Like it's um, it's it's there's more like it's it's supposed to be you, mm. you know. And that's what that, that's what it is. Like if people, it, it, it should be yourself at all mm. times, <coughs> you know, as as much as you can, you know. And, and in music, you should be very much yourself, you know, and that's noticing your flaws in when you can, and embracing it, you know. And uh, it, it, it's it's you feel a bit naked or whatever, but like, you feel cool. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. At, at the end of the day, at least you can be uh, happy with what you made instead of. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. I mean, like we we, um, Harrow's in a way that first band was mm. trying to appeal to a bigger audience and was not ever being really happy with it. Where, because we just weren't that good at it. We weren't good at making those big pop songs. We weren't mm. good at making those big catchy indie rock songs, you know? Um, I f we're really happy with what we do now because we like it and that's the important thing is that we like mm. it. Um, so yeah, like, and, and it's like, if people are gonna enjoy it or not, it doesn't really matter as long as you're happy with what you're doing, you know? Um, and that's kind of what we got ourselves in the position, but it's, it's became really fun. When you signed to Rough Trade then, did it, this attitude change? No. No, it was, it, was, it was kind of like, but James Byrne, who manages the Van Vidal, hmm. he's, uh, he released our records for any other city, and it's an independent label in Ireland that he releases all the stuff himself. And it was just that, like James did a lot of like, he got us into the idea of like limited runs with like, you, the quality of the stuff, the quality of the music should match the quality of the artwork, should match the quality of the campaign, should match the quality of the gigs, like everything should be, you know, make sense in that way, you know, and that, like, he, he put it really well on things, like it should be that on a bigger scale, you know, and that's a rough trade. They completely catered, they simply said, like, we want you to produce the album, we want, like, like, and they said we could, like, if you want to produce it, we can look for whatever, but like, you want you to 
to yeah. do it because they like the sound of bomb bomb or whatever. But like, um, it was really important to to just 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 kind of do the same thing because we're very comfortable in that and not complacent, mm -hmm. but just it was it was us again. Like it was just it, it felt very natural to to go down these kind of punky kind of ways of limited things and stuff like that. But like you know, Al was saying earlier, it's like he tried to book tours, he tried to do the whole Fugazi thing for a bit, but like, how many emails did you send? Oh, I was, I think it was like the first like UK tour, I tried to, I got in touch with 50 venues, mm. um, all different nights and different venues, and I heard back from one of them who said no. <laughs> yeah. um, and then we got a booking agent a little bit after by searching for booking agents for ages uh, around the UK. And um, we got one, and she's still our booking agent today, okay. she's absolutely excellent. Um, and uh, she booked us a tour about two months later in all the same <coughs> venues. <laughs> so it's all very networked, you know. But I think, I think the big thing that we learned off being with Any Other City uh, Records was uh, the importance of owning something tangible that's like, you know, you know, something that's worth something. You know, it's not just a, you know, like a, here you are, here's your CD, here's your CD. It's like two stamps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's yeah, like yeah. Stamp, yeah, stamp, stamp, and stamp right. it and wrap it, but make it, make it something that's kind of worth owning. And when we met Rough Trade, along with the most importantly, the musical side of it, like there was full creative control, full freedom in that regards. But in terms of like releasing stuff, because they're a record label, their interest is going to be in releasing records. Mm -hmm. um, the physical side of it, you know, they're like, yeah, like we love the way you've done that. You know what I mean? Right. We just want to help you do it on a bigger on a bigger scale. So mm -hmm. for our single, our, ne our, our new single, uh, Paris for Lunch, it's like it's getting released on a thousand. Uh, hand folded uh, seven inches okay. which we have hand folded all of them and numbered them and you know we have had a good friend of ours from school from when we were like uh, 12 years old and he's done the artwork and we've had a good friend of ours from another friend from school who you know he's not a good friend he's actually an asshole a guy called Connor <laughs> don't trust him uh, but he wrote the liner notes uh, and like you know th things like this that we've had that are they've been, they've been really uh, it's good having your friends around but you no know, rough trade have in no way influenced what we do they just Helped us do it, uh, uh, release it to more people, which is what a record label should do. But they, but they totally suggest things all the time. They're totally like, what do you think of this, this, and this? And then you're like, I'm oh, not comfortable with that. And then they're like, they suggest other things, and you know, there's really good people to talk to. Yeah. And finally, then, because we kind of have to get to the album as well. Um, <laughs> this is what do. Uh, no, no, I, I, I assume there's been a, a bit of separation now that the, the album is uh, done now. And with, with everything that you mentioned, uh, wanting to be yourself and that kind of punk mentality, how do you look back at the album now, at the, at the finished product? I was listening to it last night and I am listening to it for a bit. I kind of, before we go on gigs, I kind of need to, just for time and issues and for lyrics and stuff, just kind of just boost my memory a bit. Mm. And I'm really proud of it. You know, I'm like, uh, I think it's, I think it's the best thing we've done to this date, which is good. Like, I'm really proud of the way it's been released, and really proud of the way we've done it, like the way we recorded it, the way we've written it, and it was the best. We gave it our best shot at that. Right. But it's just, it's not like the be all and end all. Like, it's just kind of like the, when we finish that, we're like right, uh, like album two or whatever. You know, like it, it's. It's really, it's, it's always going to be a weird milestone and an important milestone in, in anyone's kind of like musical trajectory or whatever. And then we'll always remember it more so probably than other albums, you know. But it's like, it's a big, it was a big part of my life. Like, mm -hmm. like it was, I obsessed about it for like, out, like my life, I suppose. And then really obsessed about it for two years, like really kind of got into mm -hmm. it. And, you know, it documents that time really well, I think, or, or where, where I was, and certainly all the lads were, and you can hear, it's really cool, like, playing with, like, seeing, like, a 16-year-old Al and Daniel, you know, mm -hmm. and, and seeing how they played then, and I've literally seen every step since. Right. You know, I remember, like, oh, Al plays guitar, because we were making stupid jackass videos, <laughs> like, uh, not impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Probably hilarious, and <laughs> not for that good reasons. But I like, yeah. see. I, I heard Al played like he was like, "Oh, I hear Al's playing guitar now." I'm like, "Oh, right." And I'm like, "Oh, what kind of guitar?" And it's like flamenco. Like, <laughs> pretty cool. Okay. And that's how we, and that's how we started. Like, okay. and then it's like Al went from that to like 
I was, <laughs> I was like, you can't really play guitar anymore. I was like, I can like, but yeah. I, just, I, might, I might have forgotten a little bit. He's forgotten a lot. <laughs> but when you start learning a couple of things, like, yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, like, in terms of, like, the, you know, um, like, if we had these uh, mindset going into recording the album, yeah, we still had them. We uh, self produced, we recorded mm -hmm. ourselves, we kept it, we recorded it in Dublin, we recorded it in a studio where we've recorded everything else. So we still had that mindset. And then in terms of being like happy with the record, it's like, yeah, like I'm happy with it. I'm not like, I don't think it's unbelievable. I think it's, I think it's all right. I think it's good. I think it's mm -hmm. a fair representation of where we're at. But, uh, you know, I'm, I, I want to do something that I'm, I feel more like, yeah, that's what I'm putting me up and put like my name to. Not that I don't want to put my name to that, but it's like, it's a, it's a stepping stone. And I think, you know, it's important not to be like, yeah, like that was, that's it, you know, we've done it, we've done the record. It's like, it's one of many. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. So, well, finally there, have you, have you already started uh, working on new material and then looking yeah. towards the future? Yeah, I mean, even when we finished the record, we had to do a B-side for the first single, which we didn't have. So mm -hmm. we're like, oh, how do we do that? And we're right. like, oh, well, let's just like, we, we always seen it as being a, an experimental thing. So we went in, and, um, we just, like the room wasn't set up um, with the way we normally set it up, like there was cases everywhere. We're like, okay, let's just not set the room up properly. Let's just try something different because it's supposed to be an experiment. It's supposed to be a B-side. So we've done that. And then approaching the newer stuff, um, we've obviously got less time because mm -hmm. we're touring so much and we're a lot more busy. It's hard to take the time that we had. So we have to kind of think about it slightly differently. And it's fun. And it's like we, the first record, we wanted to make it um, a raw, live first record where it's like this is the instrument that this person's played. This is the instrument they personally mm -hmm. play. And like, how does that sound all together? Um, where with the next stuff, it's like, it's, it's, it's fair game there. We're like, well, we could make a big, big studio album, like maybe, or we could do the same again, maybe, I don't know. But we're just, we're gonna write a couple of songs, write some ideas, see where they are, and then see what makes sense from that. And then if it's, if it's a case of like, this could work really well with, you know, a second guitar or a load of percussion or whatever, then we'll go do that. Where the first time we were a little bit you know, we were a little bit strict on it. We're like, no, let's let's try to figure this out amongst the four of us. That's not saying that we won't do that stuff again, but it's kind of like, yeah, it's 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 important to kind of keep on your feet and keep on your toes. Yeah. And, and not to get to, well, you mentioned the word, not get too complacent. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, it's not just I like... I keep enjoying it, like, it's just silly to laugh, like, <laughs> right. and you're just with your mates, and yeah, it's great. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, no worries. Thank you.